Right, the COVID-19 third wave has come and gone, but a possible fourth wave still looms and the death toll thus far is still being debated. The official death rate is 88,674, according to the Department of Health. But when so-called excess deaths are considered, many scientists believe that the figure is much higher, possibly three times higher at more than 260,000 deaths. Excess uh, deaths are the number of deaths over and above the deaths that are expe expected rather based on historical data. Let's also talk about vaccinations opening today for 12 to 17 year olds and to discuss all of this we're joined by the director of the Centre for the AIDS Programme of Research in South Africa Professor Salim Abdul Karim of course he's also been appointed as the Vice President of Outreach and Engagement at the International Science Council that is an NGO working to provide a global voice for science uh, Professor great to have you with us as always. And, and firstly, congratulations on your appointment at the International Science Council. Uh, what does that mean for, for you, and if you don't mind, uh, for us as South Africans, because we proudly proclaim you as our own? <laughs> Professor, unmute. We cannot hear a word. Okay, can you okay. hear me now? Got you, go ahead. Okay. My, my, my apologies. Thanks very much, Francis. Great to be here with you this evening and a very good evening to the listeners and viewers. Um, as we uh, you know, try as a global community of scientists to try and provide a voice for science, to try and uh, raise the profile of science and to ensure that policymakers, the public, is, is better aware of what science can contribute to important issues, not just COVID, climate change, and so on. And so in that context, the International Science Council, which is the official voice of science in the United Nations, uh, has taken it upon himself to uh, uh, engage with a whole range of countries, scientists, local academies, individual researchers and research institutions to raise the profile of science. And that's my one of my tasks. All right. And, and we wish you well with, with that. Coming back to South Africa, one of the ongoing debates um, about the death toll. Uh, do you agree with Mark Haywood uh, writing in the Daily Maverick saying that, that counting deaths is uh, has always been the most accurate way to measure this? And we need to be honest that it's much worse uh, than the official reporting stats. And in fact, South Africa is one of the hardest hit countries in the world. So it's quite right. We often use deaths because deaths are usually uh, difficult to hide in that the information we obtain on deaths is usually one of our most accurate. Unlike, you know, tests or admissions, which are a little bit more, uh, can be more readily underreported. So deaths are much more accurate. And in that respect, we always want to use death as a key indicator. Now, in South Africa, we have a difference between the reported COVID-19 deaths and the excess deaths, and that difference is about 2.9-fold. So we know that there is a difference between reporting and excess deaths, and that difference comes about because there are likely to be many COVID deaths that occur outside of the healthcare services. So they just haven't tested or they haven't come forward and they've passed away. And some effort was made to deal with that through doing testing on corpses. But you need to take it in the context that globally, there's a very big difference between reported COVID-19 deaths and excess deaths. In fact, the difference at a global level which is calculated very well by a big study that was sponsored by The Economist, shows that globally there are about 3.3-fold more excess deaths than there are reported deaths. So it's not a unique South African phenomenon. It's a global phenomenon. And it's worse in some countries, much less so in others. Now, in countries that have a younger population, you tend to get a, a higher fraction of underreporting. So in other words, you're getting more excess deaths than reported deaths. So now to compare excess deaths in South Africa with reported deaths in other countries, that's an incorrect comparison. 
That yeah. just it's a nonsensical comparison. You must compare excess debts in South Africa with excess debts elsewhere, and we are in line with what you see elsewhere. Okay, so so you're saying we're not alone in in sort of having this debate and and seeing this this huge amount of excess debts, uh, but then keeping the official records uh, separate. Uh, talking about youngsters, and we don't have much time, uh, but are you happy that 12 to 17 year olds are are now eligible to go and get uh, vaccinated? And how vulnerable do you think South Africa is, given where we are in terms of the vaccination rate and the predictions of a fourth wave? So when we look at the way in which the epidemic has unfolded in our country to date in the last 18 to 20 months, we have seen that we, after each wave, we have about a three-month period where we have very low transmission. We had the same between our first and second waves and the same between our second and third waves. And that's roughly between 94 and 99 days. So let's, let's for argument's sake, just say it's a three-month interval. We are now in that three-month interval. And if we use that three-month interval, if it repeats itself as it did previously, we can expect to have some kind of new wave uh, in, at the end of that three months, which is at the end of December. But there are many things that will determine whether we have a fourth wave. And the critical variable that we don't know is whether there'll be a new variant, because a new variant is going to be an important part of the equation if we are going to have a severe fourth wave. If we don't get a new variant, if it's just simply the Delta variant trying to spread again, we're likely to have a very mild fourth wave. So it's it's highly dependent on variants. Now, if we want to be better prepared for the fourth wave, we've got to increase vaccination coverage. The highest priority is the 60 plus. And we're doing reasonably well there. We need to do better. But uh, now going to the teens gives us an opportunity to help reduce overall transmission. Okay. So even though the vaccine doesn't benefit them too much personally, it will have an impact on the overall epidemic. Yeah, because, uh, of course, it's, it's like it's been said, they are the ones transmitting to, to the elders in, in some instances. Uh, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time. And hopefully uh, those variants take a break for Christmas, please. Uh, that was the director of the Center for the AIDS Program of Research in South Africa, Professor Salim abdul Karim.